Hello again and welcome to this lesson. We're still doing factoring the difference of two squares and we're looking at some examples. Okay, so I'm going to just think up a few examples to show you and I'll start with a very basic and a very common one. Okay, I find this one quite often, x squared minus one. And th is this the difference of two squares? That's the first thing I have to ask myself. What type of factoring am I going to use? The first one I always look for is common factor. Can I find a common factor in my in the terms that I have? Here, obviously, both terms don't have an x. Uh, both terms have a 1, but taking out a 1 as a common factor is uh, unnecessary and irrelevant. But what I do notice here is that I have two terms, and the two terms are being subtracted. There's a different sign. This one is positive and that one is negative. That's the important. The signs of the two terms are different. If that's the case, then the next question is, can both be written as squares? I've got an x squared already, but one can be written as one squared. Good. If that's the case, I've got the difference of two squares, then I know this was the result of the product of two binomials, okay? Where the one binomial was just x, so that the, the in the first one, these two together multiply to give me x, and these two together multiply to give me 1. But it should be negative 1, so 1 must be a positive 1, and 1 must be a negative 1. And this will cause the middle term, that when I multiply these two terms, I'll get plus 1 and negative 1, which will cancel out. That is why multiplying these two binomials doesn't give me three terms, but only two terms. Okay, this is therefore writing an exponential expression as the, pro uh, sorry, not exponential, uh, algebraic expression as the product of two algebraic expressions. And that's, that's what factoring is. Let's think of another example. Okay, I'll make it a bit more difficult. Let's go for 16 minus 4y squared. Okay, so again, we see these two terms. I can, first of all, look if I can take out a common factor. In this case, I can actually. I, I didn't intend that, but I can take out a common factor. I can take out 4 as a common factor. Then I'm left with 4 minus y squared. Then, if I have to completely factorize, it means that I have to write each of my factors must be a prime factor, in a sense, a prime algebraic factor like this one. This can't be factorized anymore. There's no uh, way of factorizing this as the product of two uh, expressions anymore. But this one can. This one we can, we still have the 4 that's in front. And, and actually, if we're technically correct, we'll write this as 2 squared. Okay, write it in prime factors. And then this one can become two brackets. Why? Because we see there's two terms. The one term has a positive, the other one a negative, so there's different signs, the difference of two squares. The four can be written as two squared. So this can be two times two, okay, gives me the four. One must be a plus, the other one a negative, and then y times y to gives me y squared. Good, that was another example. Let's do one or two more. Okay, so just as you can see here, I've got it as the product of factors. Uh, that if I multiply all of this out, simplifying it by removing the brackets, by distributing, uh, I'll get exactly this answer when everything is simplified. Okay, how about something like 9x to the power of 4 minus uh, y to the power of 6? Okay, how can I factorize this maybe? Well, in this case, we can s we first ask uh, these two terms. So that's the, the one has got a positive, the other one a negative, which means it is the difference of two terms. Is it the difference of two squares? Well, the nine can be written as three squared. That's important. All of the factors must be able to be squared. The x to the power of four can uh, definitely be written as squared. x to the power of 4 is x squared times x squared. I hope you agree with me there, okay, because there's four factors. In other words, it is a x squared 
multiplied by itself. So it's an x squared squared. Okay. For y to the power of 6, that is 3y's times another 3y's. Okay, so do you see what I'm doing? I'm trying to get uh, something squared. So it's the difference of two squares. So in fact, what I have here is I've got 3x squared that is being squared minus y to the power of 3 that is being squared. So this is the term that's being squared and that's the term that's being squared. And the reason why I need that is because that's what's going to be the two terms in my brackets. This is going to be 3x squared plus y cubed and 3x squared minus y cubed. And just to test yourself again is multiply this with that and I say 3 times 3 gives me my 9 x squared times x squared means I've got four x's and then negative it must always be a negative this if both of these signs are negative or both are positive they uh, they can't factorize into two brackets okay but um, then we have y to the power of 3 times y to the power of 3 sorry that should be 3 sorry that gives me y to the power so three y's times another three y's means i'm multiplying six y's so uh, that is indeed correct okay let me do one more and in this one what i'll illustrate i'll illustrate two things for you there let's go for a negative 100 t plus 4 t to the power of 3 okay now as I said before the first important thing to do is to find out if there's a common factor that is always the very first thing you do when that you are asked to factorize find a common factor here it's important to note that that the it, it is actually not the difference of two squares because we don't have t can't be squared okay t is not squared I can't write it as uh, something squared unless I make it a square root which we'll get to later on and neither is t to the power of 3. So it's important that something can only be writ, um, a square if it has an even exponent. So this exponent is 1, that exponent is 3. These are both even exponents, and because they're even, I could divide them by 2, and that's how I got this one. x to the power of 2 is x to the power of 4 divided by 2. y to the power of 3, I get the 3, by dividing the 6. These can't be. So, But what I can do is I can take out a t as a common factor. So if I do that, I'm left with, and I can also take out a 4. You'll, you'll notice. So uh, 4 t's can be taken out. And then what I have is 20, negative 25. No more t because I took one out. So that would be replaced by multiplying by 1, which is unnecessary. And then plus and then instead of 4t to the power of 3, I took out a 4 as well as a t, so I'm left with t squared. Now, is this the difference of two squares? Now, it doesn't have the format that we've been looking at, this a squared minus b squared. But we do recognize that their signs are different. The two terms have different signs. One is a negative, one is a positive. So because of the commutative property of addition, I can just turn them around. I can say it's t squared minus 25 and then I've got this okay so th that's the way I like to do it is just to get that format that looks uh, uh, that I recognize that I can identify so four again I can write that as 2 to the power of 2 this is not as important but it's it's certainly not wrong okay and then this last bracket can again be factorized into two brackets where we get t with half of the exponent, okay, that's how I did this one, okay, uh, half of the exponent of x to the power of 4 was x to the power of 2, half of the exponent of y was 3, okay, so it's t with half of the exponent. This 25, is it a square? I never, I never tested that, but it is indeed, it's 5 squared, so in other words, it's minus 5 t plus 5. Also notice that I swapped these two brackets around now. It doesn't matter whether it's t minus 5 times t plus 5 or t plus 5 times t minus 5. The order of these two brackets are completely unimportant. 
and there I go there I factorize this into uh, as far as I could nothing else here can be written as factors uh, any further I hope you enjoyed it I'll see you in the next